Hey everyone, I'm super excited to do this video. Basically, I'm starting a series of videos on TensorFlow 2. The content is based on my latest book released on TensorFlow 2, TensorFlow in Action, which is currently in the Manning Early Access program. If you are interested in checking out this book, check out the video description. So, a little bit about me. I'm Tushan, currently based in Sydney, Australia. I work as a senior data scientist at QB Insurance and have been contributing to the machine learning community as an educator. I have published with several popular publishers like Manning, DataCam, and Pact. I have also been using TensorFlow since its beginning. So I've been pretty much through everything TensorFlow has thrown at me so far. In this video, we are going to primarily talk about why TensorFlow and what is TensorFlow. It is a popular buzzword and some of you might be interested in learning what it accomplishes and how it is different from other scientific tools. Next, one of the great benefits of TensorFlow is the speed up in its execution. We will see how exactly TensorFlow speeds up the computations. To put simply, TensorFlow is an ecosystem for growing solutions for your machine learning problems, particularly deep learning based solutions. But what does it mean? To understand that, let's assume you're planning to start a chicken farm. Your end goal is to get the maximum number of eggs. So first you'd go to a seller and buy chicken. You will need to be a bit careful when buying chicken as the seller might try to sell chicken that are not so good. So you'll need to carefully cherry pick chicken when buying. Then you'll need to facilitate the chicken with the right conditions and resources to protect them. For example, from weather and obviously from Mr. Fox and keep them healthy. For example, by providing the correct nutrition, so you'll maximize your output at the end. Well, the battle isn't over yet. Afterwards, you'll need to maintain records of how many eggs each chicken laid, as well as find out why some chicken are not laying as many eggs as others and fix any lingering issues. Finally, if you do everything right, you'd keep getting basket after basket of eggs, making you the most successful egg producer in town. Well, as you can see, this is a cycle. So you start with chicken, and then you provide the necessary conditions and resources for them to lay as many eggs as you want. And then you maintain records of how many eggs were laid by each chicken. And if you do all of these steps correctly, well, then you end up with maximizing the number of eggs. Enough about eggs. How does it help me to understand TensorFlow? Well, a little chicken farm is quite analogous to the steps you'd follow in a machine learning project. Getting the right chicken is like retrieving data and making sure the data is in good quality. Just like cherry picking the chicken, you'd need to perform certain steps like exploratory data analysis and cleaning to make sure the data is in good conditions. Producing the right conditions to the chicken is like training a model with the data you just cleaned. Both processes are there to get the desired outcome. Protecting the chicken will maximize your eggs, where the model training will maximize the chances of the correct outcome. It's not just enough to provide correct conditions. You'll need to check if those measures are effective. Just like maintaining records for each chicken, the model evaluation evaluates the model in terms of how well it is doing. This is a vital step to check if the model training went well. Finally comes reaping what you saw. After have you provided the right conditions for the chicken and ensured that they're working, you're good to collect the massive egg harvest. This is analogous to if you do the model training and evaluation, then you can deploy your model for real world usage. Typically for each of these steps, there are specialized tools and libraries that does the job. For example, you'd use NumPy and Pandas for data related tasks for model training you'd rely on something like scikit-learn. Model evaluation is again done using scikit-learn and sometimes with visualization tools like matplotlib. Finally, 
to deploy your model, you'd go to the cloud and create a web server with something like Flask. Now, let TensorFlow enter the picture. It will get rid of the massive headache of juggling between different libraries to achieve this single end goal. In other words, TensorFlow can retrieve your data, just like mentioned here. It can build and train your models. It can evaluate your models and make sure the models are well trained. And also at the end, well, deploy your machine learning solution. Now, let's put what we just learned in a nice flowchart. So you typically start with some messy data and then you do exploratory data analysis to find out what is in the data and what you can do with the data. And then you perform data cleaning to clean up any impurities you might have in the data. Then you end up with some clean data. And then you would perform a step known as feature engineering to come up with better features. And better features usually help the model to learn quicker and better. Typically, in deep learning problems, we don't use feature engineering. Deep learning models would rather rely on more data than good quality features. That's why we didn't mention about the feature engineering step in our previous discussion. And then once you have the data plus features, then you would go into model building and training. After you perform the model building and training, you will end up with a trained model. After you end up with a trained model, you would go to the step known as model evaluation. In model evaluation, you would check your model against certain performance metrics to see if the model has performed well. If everything goes well, then you would end your project there and you will deploy it for the real world usage. But typically, you won't really get it in that first cycle. That's why I call it a beautiful mess, because you will end up going back and forth in this cycle to end up with a better model. For example, after you evaluate your model, you might find out that you, there are still some impurities in the data that you haven't attended to. Then you would have to go back to that first step and clean your data again. Or you might realize that you haven't chosen the right model or you haven't optimized certain parameters of your model. So you might end up going back to the training stage and training a new model. So as I've said here, machine learning is a beautiful mess. So, to understand how TensorFlow actually speeds up our computations, well, let's look at two different code examples. In one code example, you can see we are doing things with NumPy, and in the other one, we do things in TensorFlow. And for the purpose of this exercise, let's assume we are implementing a dense layer. A dense layer is a very prevalent computation in deep networks that involves multiplying an input with a weight matrix and adding a bias. In other words, it's actually two different operations, a matrix multiplication and an element-wise addition. Let's look at how we can implement this in NumPy. So you can see there's an input, which is a 2 by 3 matrix, the weight matrix, which is a 3 by 2 matrix, and finally a bias, which is a 1 by 2 matrix. And then this dense computation is encapsulated in this function, which is called dense. So it multiplies the input with the weight matrix and then uh, produces the output res and then y, the final output that is, is produced by adding b to the res, which is the intermediate output. And you can just call this computation with the correct input, the weight and the bias and you will get the result. In TensorFlow, things are done in a similar fashion. So first you define x, which is the input, a two by three matrix. However, when you're defining weights and biases with TensorFlow, you use this new data structure called TensorFlow variable. For the purpose of this discussion, we can assume that this operate as NumPy arrays, but in reality, they're actually a little bit different than NumPy arrays, but we'll consider that sim operate similar to NumPy arrays for this discussion. And then, you can define a similar function in TensorFlow that computes the exact same thing. For example, use tf.matmal 
to get the matrix multiplication of x and w and tf.add to add the bias to the intermediate output which returns y and then you can just call that function and get the output the actual difference comes when you have to repeatedly execute this function then what tensorflow does is because we have decorated our tensorflow function with this tf.function decorator it will build a graph of that particular computation when it first executes that function. So your TensorFlow data flow graph would look like this. The inputs and outputs are represented as edges and operations as nodes. So this is a key difference between TensorFlow and NumPy code. Having this graph is immensely helpful if you're executing this function many times. In NumPy, executing this function for example, thousand times is pretty much like seeing, the new, seeing a new function thousand times. Whereas in TensorFlow, as soon as TensorFlow builds this graph, it knows about all the computations that goes on within that function and can quickly retrieve the output for a given input. For example, deep networks are ideal use case that can capitalize on these data flow graphs as they execute the same set of operations over and over again for different batches of data. So, what is TensorFlow good for and what is TensorFlow not good for? Keep in mind that TensorFlow is not a silver bullet that will magically solve all your problems. If you are not careful to assess the feasibility of TensorFlow to your problem, you can easily end up spending several frustrated days because you chose the wrong tool. Worse, it could even give you a bad impression on TensorFlow and you decide not to use that tool at all. It is a good tool for processing large amounts of data and to build deep learning models, obviously, because it has so much support for building deep learning models with so much less code. However, you'd be bringing a gun to a knife fight if you use it for small structured data or to build non-deep learning models because there are other tools that can easily satisfy these needs. Finally, some takeaways. TensorFlow is an all-in-one store for all your machine learning needs, especially if you're building deep learning models to solve problems. Um, TensorFlow is not by any means a silver bullet for any of the problem that any of the problems that comes your way and has its weaknesses. So you need to be careful in assessing whether TensorFlow is a good solution for your problem or not. TensorFlow leverages dynamically built computational graphs to speed up its code. As we saw in our example, repeated computations can immensely benefit from um, this functionality of TensorFlow. If you talk about TensorFlow 2 in action, um, this book covers a large number of topics related to TensorFlow and it follows an easy to follow cadence for, from easy to difficult topics. Thank you so much for look, watching this presentation. Uh, if you want to connect with me or follow me, um, I share a lot of um, details about the book as well as TensorFlow on these social media, um, LinkedIn, Twitter and Medium. So feel free to send a request and connect with me. Thank you.